Okay, so, so now all others can uh, mute. Okay, all of you can mute because other, otherwise that will disturb uh, our recording. So, okay. So the first question was, can we identify or recognize the people in heaven? Or the, the problem is recognizing each other in heaven. Okay, you know, um, for, uh, to get the answer for that, usually, you know, when uh, some of our dear ones are dying, so we used to say that uh, we hope we will see him or we will see her uh, again one day in heaven, right? We used to say that we will see them, okay, again in heaven. So I believe there are possibilities for that or uh, we will be able to identify or recognize each other in heaven. As uh, Brother Jason said and uh, uh, LCND said, we will be able to uh, recognize the people uh, there. At the same time, there are many things to study from that. Then only we will understand what is going to happen in heaven. So we know that there are, there are many reasons for I mean, saying that we will be able to recognize each other in heaven. We know when will our physical body be transformed? The transformation of a physical body, when it is going to happen? Who has the answer? The physical body, the transformation of physical body. The first arrival of Jesus Christ on the cloud. Yes, thank you. So that is, you know, that is right, you know, at the moment of our resurrection, or at the rapture of the church, or at, at the second coming of Jesus Christ, the, the, the physical body will be uh, transformed. That's what we read in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17 says that the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in air. Okay. So this is going to happen when Jesus Christ is coming uh, in, the, in the air. So that is the moment when our physical body will be changed and getting a spiritual body or spirit body, okay? which is also known as the celestial body. Okay? So the, the spirit body after the transformation or after the resurrection is known as the celestial, celestial body. Okay, the same thing is uh, mentioned in First Corinthians also. In First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verses uh, uh, fifty-one and fifty-two. Uh, First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verses fifty-one and fifty-two. Yes, Elsa, you can read that verse. Behold, I tell you a mystery: we shall yeah. not, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed okay what is that in malayalam it says nam ellavaru nidra kollugilla ennal andhya kaakalam nadu thingal pettana kannimikkunnadinu idil nam ellavaru roopaandara padum kaakalam dhonikkum marichu varshayra yorkum nam ellavaru roopaandara padugeyum cheyum that means in within a, within a, the time of tingling of an eye okay at the last trumpet what is going to happen okay uh, the, the dead the dead will raise uh, the uh, the dead will be raised imperishable okay and we will be changed our body will be transformed that's the meaning of that so that is the thing that is that's the time that uh, uh, the transformation or change of our body is going to happen okay so mainly there are two types of bodies mentioned in the in the bible especially in first corinthians chapter uh, 15 uh, verses 35 to 30, 58. It's a, it's a long, I mean, lengthy passage. We are not, not going to read all those portions. Okay. So it's first Corinthians chapter 15 verses 35 to 58. You can see many things are written about uh, the, the uh, 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 particular two types of bodies are there. Okay. So the first one is the terrestrial body. The first one is the terrestrial body. And you can call it as a earthly body or physical body or mortal body. Okay. And the second one is celestial body. And that also is known as the resurrected body, immortal body or glorious body or heavenly body. Okay. So these are the two specific types of bodies that we are seeing in the first Corinthians. Okay. So the terrestrial body means the earthly body. Now we are in ter terrestrial situation. Because it's a physical body. It's a physical body and it's a mortal body. That's why that we, we are subjected to the death. 
Okay, but the second one is after the resurrection, it becomes the celestial. That means it is immortal and it is glorious and it will become the heavenly body. So that's the meaning of that. So the question comes like this, you know, what would be the structure or the shape of a body after resurrection or after the transformation or, or in the kingdom of God? Okay, so after the resurrection, or after the resurrection, we will be with Jesus Christ and we will be in heaven or we will be in kingdom of God. So when reaching there or when we are leaving this uh, uh, physical body, what would be the structure or what would be the shape of a body in heaven or in the kingdom of God? You know, if, we, if you're asking that question to me, to be frank, I have no idea about that. And I cannot pictureize uh, our glorious body uh, uh, in that way. But one thing is sure that uh, 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 the body will not be of flesh and blood because it is uh, uh, clearly written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Eh? So we can say that this will, this, the resurrected body will not be a flesh and blood, okay? Because it is written very clearly there. So anyways, you know, after resurrection, we are going to be in a, in a, in a, in a different body, but we will be able to recognize each other, okay? So this, uh, the, the, the present body will not be there, but we will be getting a spirit body or glorified body or resurrected body, the heavenly body or something. But we will be able to recognize each other. We will be able to recognize each other. And we read you know, uh, our uh, in, in, in book of Revelation, we read that uh, there is a book of life and our names are written there in heaven, right? Our names are written there. That makes sense that each of us will be identified there with our names, okay? So these are the reasons that we can say, even Jason brother also was saying about, um, I mean, uh, what is that? Uh, the rich man and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the um, um, Lazarus, okay? Lazarus and rich, uh, rich man. So that also you can uh, connect with this, uh, I mean, uh, this portion, because, you know, after the resurrection, even though we are getting a, a spiritual body or heavenly body, uh, we will be able to recognize each other. That is the meaning. Even after the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus also uh, was appearing to many people, right? Many people. Uh, and uh, they understood that this is, I mean, Jesus. And uh, again, uh, in, the, in the epistles, you know, when uh, Apostle Paul is writing to the, the Corinthian church and the Thessalonian church, uh, we will understand that Paul said, you will be my joy and you will be my crown or reward in heaven when God distribute the rewards, okay? That means Paul will understand these are the ones whom he held, he led to the Christ, okay? And through his ministry, those people are saved, okay? So now, uh, you know, while Apostle Paul was ministering is in, in this year, he was leading many people into Christ in different churches, especially in Corinthian church and Thessalonian church. So about those people, after reaching in heaven, he says that, okay, after reaching in heaven, you are going to be my joy and you are going to be my crown in heaven because I am the person who led you into Christ. Because so that was, I mean, talking about his ministry. So that, that also, we can understand that when we will be recognized there in heaven, so we can recognize the people. So Paul, if Paul could, uh, if Paul is able to recognize the people whom he led to Christ, then we also will be able to recognize the people. But the, the problem is, you know, we can, we can just say that we will be able to recognize the other people in heaven uh, because of these reasons. Eh? We can believe that we will be able to recognize each other. But the thing is different. The thing is in heaven, there is no relations. This is the point. There is no relations. You know, I think uh, Elia Mandi was giving the answer that um, uh, we can recognize, but there is no feeling like that's something. Okay. Anyway, so that is true. That is true. But the thing is, you know, in heaven, there is no relations. That means there is no family setup or uh, what is that? Uh, uh, parent-children relations or husband-wife relation 
or no father, no mother, no children, no brothers or no sisters. And even I believe uh, there is no age limit also. There is no age limit also. I think we all will be same in look, in shape and in age wise and so on. Okay, so in everything we will be same. There is no age, you know, we, we will be thinking, okay, oh, my uh, mom or my dad died uh, in uh, her 80th year. So, okay, when she, when she was dying, 80 years. Okay, so I will be seeing my mother in heaven in, in 80 years, just like an uh, like old, old mother or something, somebody. Okay, so it's not going to happen there. So we all will be same in heaven. Okay, there is no age barrier or age-based uh, differences or something, no difference as a pastor or believer. Okay, there is no pastor, there is no believers. We all are believers there. Okay, we all will be saints of God children of God, or there is no different organizations in heaven, no different colors in heaven, okay? But we all will be one in Christ in heaven. So that is going to happen. I mean, that's a great and glorious day that we are going to get in heaven. So that is the expectation of the people that we all will be like God and we will be with God, with Jesus forever and ever. Now, uh, we will go to the uh, second question. The second question is, what is the need of destroying the present heaven by fire? This is a complicated question. At the same time, um, I think some of you have given, Gidu and Justin have given some of the points and uh, Jason brother also was sharing something about that. Um, so we will go into that point, especially in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, when we are comparing with the uh, Second Peter chapter 3, verses 7 and 12. Okay, so let me tell you one thing. Last class, we studied the meaning of passing away of the present earth, which is mentioned in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. But in the same verse, it is very clearly written, the present heaven also will be passed away. So the question is regarding that, why it is written, that why the heaven is going to be destroyed by fire. Okay, so when you look into 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 7 and 12, there also Peter says, the present heaven also will be destroyed by the fire. The present heaven also will be destroyed by the fire. The question is, why the destruction of heaven also should happen? Or what is the need of destroying the present heaven by fire. We believe that heaven is the place where God is living. Okay, so the, the heaven is the place that God is living there. God is there okay? in heaven, angels are there. Then why God is going to destroy the heaven? Okay, so what do you mean by that destroying the heaven? So uh, let us go to Job, book of Job, chapter 15, verse 15. We will read that verse. Job chapter 15, verse 15, yeah. Behold, God puts no trust in his holy ones and heavens are not pure in his sight. Okay. So in, in this verse, um, Eliphaz, Eliphaz, the friend of Job, okay? He says something that even the heavens are not clean in God's sight. That means how can we say the heavens are not clean in God's sight. How can we say the heavens are not clean in God's sight? You know, it is very clearly Eliphaz said. Eliphaz is the friend of Job, and we know that Eliphaz came there to, to uh, uh, comfort uh, Job. But after that, he was talking many other things, which is accusing Job and all. At the same time, the things that he was talking is uh, very, very correct. At the same time, something which is which he was talking was not related to job. It was not applicable for job. That was the problem. Okay, even he says that even the heavens are not clean in his sight. How can we say that the heaven is not clean in the sight of God? How can we say that? To get that answer for that question, we will have to know a few things about how the scientists they believe they believe, eh? and the Bible writers are picturing. Uh, the heaven and the heavens. Okay, so without understanding that, we will not get any any answer for that. Okay, so the scientists are uh, dividing 
the the heaven the, the the sky they they don't call it as a heaven or something but they call it as a sky okay so the outward sky okay so the scientists are dividing that uh, into 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 seven divisions but the the bible writers okay the bible writers are dividing the heavens uh, into into three okay so the, according to the scientist view there are seven layers for the sky or heaven there are seven layers for the sky or heaven okay so um, uh, they don't uh, they don't uh, believe that the heaven is a spiritual realm or something but they just calls uh, the heaven a sky in their secular view okay so let us see what are the seven layers of sky in scientist view the seven layers of sky in scientist view okay very quickly we will go move on and the first one is uh, a troposphere the troposphere and the second one is stratosphere and the third one is ozone layer and the fourth one is lonosphere and the fifth one is a platon layer and sixth one is heaviside layer and the seventh one is exosphere layer okay you can just i mean take a picture of that also okay if there is no time to um, write down all those points you can just take a picture of that anyway these are the seven layers that uh, the scientists are uh, 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 making or scientists have found that these are the seven layers in 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 the sky. Uh, even that itself shows that the science proves that there are more than one layers of heaven. Okay, there are more than one layers of heaven. Now let us come to the biblical view. Okay, when we study the Bible, we understand you know according to the biblical view, we can say that uh, in in heaven on the on on the basis of the Genesis chapter one verse one. You know, you can say that it is written in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 that uh, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, so it is actually heaven and the earth, but actually it is the heavens and the earth. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, that means there are, according to the Bible, there are three heavens or three levels of heaven. So you can call it as a three levels of heaven. Different, different levels are written in Bible in different places. Okay. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. And also in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, um, uh, there uh, uh, we see that, that Paul was taken into the third heaven, right? Paul was taken into the third heaven. So we can understand that at least there are three layers, so three, uh, three levels of heavens. We already studied it. Uh, uh, I think in the previous classes. Okay, the first layer is the first layer is the Earth, Earth's atmosphere, the atmosphere of the immediate Earth. That means the immediate sky on on which uh, uh, okay on the Earth which is visible. Okay, you can see that sky now immediately. You can see that sky. So that is known as the Earth's atmosphere. And the second one is the interplanetary and interstellar space it's a space after that sky after that atmosphere there is a space that is known as like this and that space uh, is where uh, we can see the stars sun and moon okay you can see there the sun stars and moon everything is there in this particular space okay and thirdly we can understand the dwelling place of god that is the place of god's throne okay there is when God is dwelling, and that place is known as the heaven of heavens. Okay, what is the meaning of that? The heaven of heavens means surely there are other layers, rather, I mean, levels of heaven. Okay, so this is the these are the three levels that, that we can understand, and there are many other verses we can prove, and we have no time to read all those verses because you now we know that uh, the the rain is coming and the thunder is coming and the lightning is coming and uh, god has provided the the manna and the and the, and the food for the people of israel from heaven and all these things are coming from the layers okay it's not from the 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 heaven of heavens okay the top one the third one the third layer is the place uh, where the angels and the the, the, the angels and God is dwelling. So that is known as the dwelling place of God. Okay, if so, if so, the present heaven or heavens, which are going to be destroyed by the fire will not be the third heaven. 
okay which is also known as the dwelling place of god or the place of god's throne rather it will be the other two layers and the elements in it will be burned by fire one day so that is what we were just discussing before when i was asking the question so god is going to not going to destroy the heaven of heavens that the third heaven but god is going to destroy the sec the first and the second heavens the sky okay and very easily we can understand that it is possible okay we may be thinking oh is it possible to destroy the the sky and everything everything will be get over okay now it is very easy for god to do that okay it is very possible to happen that maybe within a second within a second the destruction of the earth and its elements and also the sky and its elements could be burned by fire if the sun or moon or stars gets burned right if the sun is getting burned or the the moon is getting burned or the stars are getting burned within a second everything that we see will be burned off okay so that is possible but now the question is why should god destroy these layers of heaven okay why should god destroy these layers of heaven okay the reason is written in in ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 okay in ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 it is a it is a common verse anyway let's read that verse <clears throat> ephesians 6 12 yeah um for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against rulers against authorities against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places it is very clear no what is happening there it is very clearly written that for our battle is not against flesh or blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places so that very clearly says that there are many satanic armies and satanic powers and rulers authorities evil forces in heavenly places and also on the earth and in the atmosphere it is very clearly written in that particular verse that we are our battle is not against the the people those who are i mean with us but it is always i mean against to the 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 satanic army so the authorities or evil forces which is in heavenly places heavenly places means it doesn't mean that the the evil is there in 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 heaven where god is dwelling but the evil authorities are there the rulers are there the powers are there the satanic armies are there in the other two heavenly places that is known as the sky or atmosphere or somewhere okay so for example for example you can uh, say maybe um, uh, daniel you know daniel was praying uh, praying for many days and uh, he was not receiving the answer but in between he says that okay on the way i was struck with the one angel the fallen angel okay so the problem is happening somewhere uh, i mean above the above the earth that means in the atmosphere so that could be happen so that may be the reason that god wanted to destroy the wicked and the corrupted present earth and also heavenly layers by fire before he make a new earth and a new heaven so god is going to make a new earth and a new heaven but before that he was trying to he is trying to destroy everything which is wicked which is um i mean doing uh, opposed to the will of god and the fallen angels and all those things and uh, which is the the angelic sorry the the fallen angelic powers and the satanic armies and all so th- this could be the reason that god wanted to wanted to destroy the present earth and also the present heaven okay so there is uh, uh, there is one more thing that uh, i want to tell you uh, uh, from this portion that is the present earth that we see now have gone through different process in different times and different reasons okay so we can see the present earth now right we have the present earth now okay but we have to understand this present earth have gone through different process different process 
in different times for different reasons. There are many reasons for that. Okay, so let us think about a few things about that, that the present earth through various crosses. The first one, the first earth, the first earth, okay, that is not the first earth. What is that? It was a perfect and beautiful earth, according to Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18, okay, uh, because of the lack of time, we are not going to read all those portions. Okay, anyway, you know, in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18, we understand that the first earth which God has, uh, I mean, created, okay, it was very perfect and it was beautiful. It was beautiful, okay? So God created the earth and established it not as a waste place, but for the inhabitants. This is what that we read in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. That means when God created the earth, that earth was established uh, it was not as a waste place. It is very clearly written. It was not as a waste place. Okay. But it was for the inhabitants. Thomas Tinuendi, Thomas Tinuendi, Undakia, Uru, Homi Ayrno, Adyam, they even sit each other. But the second one, the second process, what happened? The earth which became void and formless. That's what we clearly read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, we understand this earth which was made by God, became void and formless. Okay, As per Isaiah chapter 14, verse 2, it is believed that because of the rebellion of fallen angels, they were put down to the earth and the earth became void and formless. So this was the, this was the thing that this was one of the incidents which happened right after the first earth. Okay, What was that? You know, the, the, the earth became void and formless, uh, it, it is said, it is believed that only because of the rebellion of the fallen angels and they were all put down to the earth, okay? And then the earth became void and formless. And the third earth, Munamata Bhumiyode process in the third, which is restored and renewed, okay? After the situation of the void and formless, pardon Shunyamai in the Avastil in the Mendaki Mati Deva, we do adine restore the renew chido, the earth which is restored and renewed. Okay, when you read Genesis chapter 1, verses 3 to 25, according to Genesis chapter 1, verses 3 to 25, God, we read that God restored or re-established the void earth by six days, and he created and arranged all the things on the earth and he placed man to dwell in it. Okay, it is very clearly written in chapter one, verses three to 25, that God was restoring or reestablishing the void and earth. At the same time, by sixth day, he created everything and arranged everything for man. Then he placed man to dwell in it. Okay, so that was the situation of the earth, the third earth. Now we will go to the fourth one. The fourth earth was the cursed earth. We know, very clearly we know, Genesis chapter 3 verse 17 says that because of the sin of man. Okay, That means when man fallen, the earth became cursed. The earth became cursed because of the fall or because of the rebellion or because of the sin of man. So the fourth one is the cursed earth. And the fifth one is the earth without saints of God. This is going to happen in future. Okay. So the present earth is actually the cursed earth, the cursed earth. Okay. At the same time, there is a, another earth is coming. That means the earth without saints of God means, you know, uh, we will, we, we already studied that after the rapture of the church, the Antichrist will take control of this world and rule over the earth for seven years. Okay, so when Antichrist is going to rule over the earth for seven years, we, the people of God, the saints of God are not there. We will be in heaven with Jesus Christ. So after the rapture of the church, when the Antichrist is ruling over this world for seven years, we will be with Jesus. Then this earth will be known as the earth without the saints of God, without the believers of God, without the saints of God. And we are going to the sixth earth. The sixth one is 
the millennial earth. Okay, we studied about the millennial kingdom for thousand years. Okay, especially in Revelation chapter nineteen. In Revelation chapter uh, nineteen, verses eleven to chapter twenty, verse six, we understand after the great tribulation, Jesus will come down from heaven with his saints to reign over the earth for thousand years. Right. So for thousand years, Jesus is going to reign over the earth and that is known as the millennial earth so in that earth okay after the tribulation when jesus is coming down from heaven to the earth to rule over the earth for thousand years we also will be with him we also will be with him so in the millennial earth we will be there in the millennial earth we will be there but in the in the in the fifth one uh, uh, the, the earth without saints of god we are not there in the sixth one, we will be there and we comes to the seventh one. Seventh one is the important thing and that is our hope that is the new earth and new heaven. Okay, in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10, read that verse. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief and then the heavens will pass away with the roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done on, on it will be exposed. And again, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, we read that everything, the earth and the heaven, the present earth and the present heaven will be passing away, but the new heaven will come, okay, in chapter, Revelation chapter 21, okay, and about that earth and about that heaven we are studying in the previous class, even today also, okay, in from, that was from Revelation chapter 21, okay, so we will be, I, I think that uh, you have got that, uh, the answer for that second question. Now we will go to the third question. Third question was, uh, yeah, what could what could be the meaning of the statement? There is no longer any sea. This is very. I mean, uh, we, we have to understand that very clearly. In chapter twenty-one, Revelation chapter twenty-one, verse one, it says that, and there is no longer any sea. This was the question. That third question. Okay. So we will think about that, you know. Uh, there we read, there is no longer any sea. That means there is no longer any sea, or you can call it as a water in the new earth. There is no water in the new earth. Okay. But the problem is in Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Read that verse also, Elsa. Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. The, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as a crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. Then the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Okay, that's enough. Thank you. You know, in, in, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, we read, there is no longer any sea in new heaven or new earth, okay? But Revelation chapter 22, verses one and two, we read, there is a river. There is a river of water. That water is the water of life in the new earth, which is clear as crystal. Very clearly it is written, which is very clear as crystal. Okay, so, okay, in that water, that water, the speciality of that water is the Clear water as crystal, okay, crystal clear. That means palangubolate, the langana vella, okay, shuttamaya vellamana, avadavulana varigin. Then, what could be the meaning of the statement, there is no longer any sea? That means, that means in John chapter, sorry, uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, John said, okay, uh, we will go to that point, like, uh, you know, especially in this particular verse, uh, I mean, John said, I saw, right, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Okay, what he saw, what he saw, okay, he said, I saw something there, I saw something special there, in verse 1, what he saw, it is a new heaven and a new earth, he saw a new heaven and new earth, that means he is the eyewitness of heaven and the other new things which is going to be established in the future. Okay. There are many things which is going to establish in the future, maybe after the millennial kingdom, after the thousand year of millennial kingdom. We already learned about, we already just heard about that new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. 
and the river of life and everything. So he says that I am the eyewitness of that. I saw that with my eyes. I saw that with my eyes, that that is going to happen. It is very clearly he is writing that. Okay? There is a heaven, there is a new heaven, there is a new earth, and there is a new Jerusalem, and there is a, I mean, a river of life. It's, it's very clear water. Okay? He saw that. That means in his vision, he is describing the heaven. It's very beautifully. Okay? Beautifully, he is describing about the heaven with his limited intellectual capacity or limited knowledge in his human view. Okay, so every person, John, not only John, every one of us has only the limited intellectual capacity. We have a limited knowledge about many things. But at the same time, here, Apostle John is describing about the new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem, and the river of water, the river of life, and everything with the limited knowledge. But think about how much more <laughs> glorious and how much more beautiful would be the heaven which cannot be described by our human limited understanding. Hallelujah. We will surely wonder and will be amazed as we get into the heaven and to the eternity. So this is what very important to understand for the believers, for the saints of God. We are going to be in a glorious place, a beautiful place, you know, with the limited understanding or human view intellectual capacity, he was explaining or describing something about the, the heaven and heavenly places and new earth and uh, new Jerusalem and everything. At the same time, let us think about how much more glorious it will be, how much more beautiful it will be in heaven. And we are going to be there one day and we will be wondered and we will be amazed men as we get into the heaven and the eternity one day. So I believe maybe, maybe chapter 21 or 22 is not sufficient to describe the reality of the beautiful heaven. Much more will be there. After reaching there only, we will see that. And after reaching there, we will, see, we will say, oh, we didn't know that in, in, uh, when we were living in the earth, we didn't know that this much beautiful it is, which, uh, this much glorious it is, I mean, that is going to happen. And I personally believe that this chapter 21 or 22 is not at all enough to describe the reality of the beautiful heaven. Amen. So we will see that with our eyes. Hallelujah. So the question is, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 and 22, verses 1 and 2. Do these verses contradict each other? Okay. In Revelation 21, verse 1, it says there is no water, there is no sea at all. But in 22, it says there is water. There is a river. There is a river. To get the answer for that question, we will have to go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 10. Genesis chapter 1, verse 10. Read. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that, that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Okay, thank you. So it says that we read that God called the dry land as earth, and the gathering of the waters he called as sea. Okay. Jalatinda Kutate, Langal Bellatin de Langura Kutate, they went to Lichu, Samudram and the Vilichu. Right? Samudra, Samudra, not a sea, cuddle. Okay? So he called the dry land as the earth. Okay? Monangi Pradeshate, Bumi and the Vilichu. Then the waters, the gathering of the waters. Okay? He called as a Samudram or sea. So here, the sea represents all things which is related to the water. Okay. Everything which is related to the water. That's the reason that it says that a gathering of water, he calls like the sea. Okay. So uh, the sea here represents all other things which is related to the water. Maybe a river, fountain, ocean, or lake, or pond, pool, anything like that. Okay. So the statement, and there is no longer any sea, also means there is no water in new earth. There is no water in new year. That is the literal meaning of that. Okay, We are going to the spiritual meaning also. When we study about the literal meaning of that verse, there is no water in heaven or there is no water in new earth and new heaven. We have to prove that. We know that the present earth, the situation of the present earth, what is that? You know, two-thirds of the earth is water now. Okay, 
two third of the earth is water. Okay, that means water is very necessary for many things. Okay, without water, the living creatures cannot survive survive on this earth. Right? Without water, the living creatures cannot survive on this earth. Okay? Even the the weather changes. Okay, the weather changes are mostly happening or connected always uh, to the water or the sea. Okay, then we cannot imagine about an earth which is without water. Hmm? In our limited understanding, in our limited understanding, we cannot imagine an earth without water. Okay, but let us make a conclusion for that question, uh, maybe in 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 two different ways. Okay, first of all, first of all. Uh, the people of God in eternity will not be in earthly body. Okay. The first reason that we can say that, why there is no water in heaven, in eternity. First point is, the people of God, those who are in eternity, will not be in earthly body. But we will be in a heavenly body or a spiritual body or a resurrected body. So we won't be in need of water in heaven. Okay. Not only that, the new heaven and the new earth, the God, you know, the God doesn't need water or sea to adjust the weather changes there. Okay. Now we need sea for many things, for many things, for many reasons. We need the sea and we need uh, the water or the pond or I mean uh, river or something. But for God. In the new heaven, new earth, okay? God doesn't need a water or sea to adjust the weather changes. God can do anything. And we say that uh, 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 Jesus Christ will be the light in the heaven. Jesus Christ is going to be the light in the heaven. We also will be the lights in heaven. So there is no need of any torch or there is no need of any sound or moon or something. But God will arrange everything there. At the same time, we have to understand we don't want any water in heaven, the literal water. We don't want any water to drink there in heaven. But then why in Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 and 2, it is mentioned about a river of the water of life in the new earth. Okay, You know, let us take that meaning of Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 and 2, the river of the life presents in an allegorical way as the holy and pure situation of eternal life. Okay, So we are going to have the eternal life in heaven in eternity. And that life is going to be a holy life and pure life and pure situation. There is nothing. That's the reason that it is very clearly in uh, particularly written that that uh, water will be very clean, very clean, very clear, just like a crystal, crystal clear. Okay. Okay. Very holy. pure situation eternal life. Meaning. So literally, it is possible for God to remove the sea from the new earth because of many reasons. And there is a spiritual meaning also here. We are going to that point and we will conclude this session with a word of prayer. Amen. So let me give you a spiritual meaning from this statement. Okay. What is the statement? There is no more sea. There is no more sea in the new heaven and new earth. What do you mean by that? You know, where John is living while he is watching this vision, this is very important to understand. Where is John? Where is Apostle John while he is receiving this uh, vision? It is in the island of Patmos. It is in the island of Patmos. We are going, going to that point now and we will close that point. Okay. You know, around him, there was full of water, right? Around him, there was full of water. Hmm? Always seeing water and sea. Hmm? Often hearing the loud voices of the waves. But as he is writing, the final chapters of the book of Revelation, of the book of Revelation, when he is writing that there is no longer any sea. Which, what, is the, what is the meaning of that? He says, I am here in the island of Patmos now, but when I see the vision of heaven, when I see the vision of heaven, I can understand one thing, there is no suffering. There is the day there is no suffering. I mean, there is no suffering in this island is going to be get over. I mean, the situation of the island, the situation of, I mean, sitting alone, the situation of, uh, I mean, giving more pain, the situation of persecution 
and everything is going to get over and I will be in heaven one day. Hallelujah. And he is reminding, I mean, he is reminding the suffering of the believers. I mean, and you are going to change that suffering and your day of rest is coming. The day of deliverance is coming and it is very near because in the book of Revelation, the sea is considered as evil or persecution. Okay, In different places, the sea or the water, a, a, a gathering of water is pictured as an evil or as a persecution, the suffering of the people. Okay, That means the enemy is, is persecuting or tormenting or torturing the people of God in different places as a sea. So that's the reason that I mean, Apostle Paul, Apostle John is reminding the people of God, those who are in different places on those days, the people of God, the churches in Asia Minor. I mean, he is writing from the, Patmo, the island of Patmos and he is writing to the, the believers, the, 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 the Christians in different places, different churches in Asia Minor. And he is saying that, I mean, our sufferings are going to be over. Amen. So our sufferings and our persecutions and our problems of this world is going to get over and we have a resting day. I mean, we have a, I mean, a day which is, uh, um, we have a kingdom that where there is no pain, there is no sufferings, there is no, I mean, troubles in our lives. I mean, that is the deliverance day. I mean, hallelujah. And that is the meaning of that. So today, I mean, these statements, I mean, I mean, speaking to every one of us, those who are listening into this, uh, I mean, program, into this Bible study, I mean, God is speaking to every one of us, just like, uh, I mean, Apostle John said that, and specifically he's speaking that our problems, our sufferings, our persecutions will get over on a day and we will be with Jesus Christ forever and ever. Hallelujah. So let us all commit ourselves with the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. This evening, what a great privilege that God has given us to come together in the presence of God. Hallelujah. What a great day that God has given us. And why we are gathering like this, why we are having these Bible studies, it's not just to get some of the ideas or just to get some of the information from the Bible or from the, the other places, but it is for our dedication, for our submission in the hands of God. Hallelujah. So God want every person to submit themselves in the hands of God. Hallelujah. But God is looking every one of us this evening. So that he says that when God is looking unto you and God is asking, are you, are you ready for the for the for the second coming of Jesus Christ, God is asking, "Are you ready for the I mean I mean rapture of the church, and are you ready for the millennial kingdom? Are you ready for the new earth and the new heaven, and for the I mean river of the water of life?" Hallelujah! So let us all submit ourselves with the mighty hand of God. Let's pray together. Hallelujah! God is in our midst this evening, and we have been listening about the the hope and expectation of the believers, the saints of God, that we will be there in heaven one day, and that is our expectation. And then let us submit also with the mighty hand of God for that. And I request uh, 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 Brother Jason to lead us in prayer now. I mean, let us all join together in prayer. And